know magic. I know magic. I know magic. I know magic. I'm extraordinary. Never been average. I'm a goddess. I'm a queen. Still a savage. All right, y'all. What's going on? It's your girl Giselle. The sheep dogs coming to you from a remote location. All right, how everybody doing today? Yes, this is another episode of She Boss Talks, and I'm on my bullshit today. All right. So listen, today's topic. I got a um. I got something I want to talk about, and it's really about what you believe in and why it works. Okay. So, um, somebody asked me why I don't believe in Jesus, and you know, I thought it was a good question, so I decided to make a video about this. Now, let me just say before I get into it, you know, not to step on anybody's toes, hurt anybody's feelings, but you might get offended by this. So, if you're somebody that's a firm, you know, what I'm saying believer in uh, Jesus as your savior and Christ, then um, this video might not be for you. All right. But if you don't mind just hearing a, you know, different perspective or an open-minded point of view about that uh, situation and those beliefs, then stay tuned, alright? So, um, if you don't know already, I'm a motivational messenger, spiritual speaker, and I am an intellectual energy, and I just come to bring truth and light to you, alright? I'm not here to change anybody's opinion about anything that they believe in, just here to make you think about why you feel or why you believe in what you believe in. And um, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Because some people just don't think about stuff. They just believe in it and they hadn't really given it any thought. And that's the main thing that I try to do. I try to make people think about it. Because if you think about it, some of the things that you believe in probably don't make sense. And then if you understand why, how they don't make sense, you may understand how it might not have necessarily been working for you in the way that you thought it was working for you. But something else that you should believe in has actually been doing the work for you the whole time. So uh, my my issue with uh, religion, for one, is the fact that it makes people or it has people believe in things outside of themselves. Now I want to give a disclaimer. I do believe that Jesus existed. Okay, I believe that he probably, you know, what I'm saying he either was a great prophet and or he was a time traveler. Now I have not done my in depth research to um, to prove it or to give any type of um, facts behind it, but. You know, to get downloads from the ancestors. So when they put thoughts in my head, a lot of times, or when thoughts come to my head like that, a lot of times I know the answer will be delivered to me in due time. So I just sit back and wait on it. Um, and if you if, if you don't believe time travel is real, then that might you know it might sound funny, it might sound crazy. But I know some of the things that I say, you know, say everybody can't handle. So I'm not offended by that. I'm not bothered by it, right? But the reason um I think that he may be a time traveler is just because I know that the elite people who uh put him in the hand of the as the storylines behind his uh, alleged existence, um, they know a lot about how um, they say things, do things, and project a certain image will make people believe things and make people not believe things, all right? So they know how to use um, things against you or powers or abilities against you that you may not be aware of that are even possible. You definitely probably don't believe that you have the same power, but not to my team, you don't believe that they have this power either. So that's why you are so easily fooled and deceived by the things that you see. Instead of understanding that you usually need to do a, a, deep, a deeper dive or a deeper dig to really learn the truth. Okay? Because normally the truth is not just going to be what you see. Alright? So um, I just want to give a disclaimer that, like I said, I do believe that he existed. But I do believe that um, he was just one of the many great prophets that did not make the cut on the Bible when it was written, alright? So, um, one of the other things I want to point out to you all uh, um, that don't know, the author who wrote the Bible, King James, um, was instructed by Queen Elizabeth actually to write the Bible. Um, and so, this is, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in another video, but because I want to stay on subject, I want to get deep into it, but you got to understand, you know what I'm saying, the games that are being played. And one of the reasons that she asked him to write the Bible, because she knew he was an author, he had already previously, um, in 1597, wrote a book entitled um, Demonology, all right? And demonology is really about the same things that the Bible is about, but it's about what he believes in, truth that he believes, things that he practices. So she found an author, you know what I'm saying, who knew about magic, spirits, occult, powers, and things of that nature, she asked him to write the Bible. So, you may understand or just get to start seeing how these, these, uh, the Bible is, is full of spells and magic, you know what I'm saying, it's full of them, it's full of 
powerful uh, knowledge, but it's also full of things that can be used for, you know, positive situations or negative situations. Have you ever wondered why Root Doctors reference the Bible? Um, a lot of books in the Bible, when they give people, uh, you know, things to do and, you know, whatever they, they, whatever kind of spells or whatever, you know, mojo, they give them to work a situation or to, 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 to handle a situation. A lot of times they give them quotes and scriptures to read out of the Bible. So why in the hell was somebody who's supposedly practicing, you know, uh, witchcraft or uh, dark energy or dark magic be referring or using references out of the Bible to push and increase their powers and the magic behind the spells that they're passing out, alright? So I just want you to think about that. So one of the reasons, one of the things that um, one of the things that, and one of the reasons I don't believe that Jesus, I don't believe in Jesus as my Savior, uh, because there are a lot of prophets that wrote a lot of scribes in a lot of um, parables back in the day. Um, they were stolen from the original people and, you know what I'm saying, put in, into a collection which was entitled the Bible, alright? So the original book of these these, prof these um, scriptures and scrolls and scribes, that was not, the original collection of those were not entitled the Bible. So the Bible is really just a title of the book. People get so caught up in that for some reason because you got cooking Bibles out here, you got fashion Bibles out here, you got makeup Bibles out here. Bible just means that it is like the all of, you know what I'm saying, the end all tell all of something that pertains to the subject of the book is about the subject matter on the book. So you gotta understand the terminology is being used when they even use stuff like titles and stuff, right? So one of the things like I said is if I if not, let me ask you, if you had a book and you went to excuse me, if you went to the library and checked out a book, you get to you get home, you start reading the book, you're into it, you find out the book is missing chapters two, six, eight, ten, eleven, and twelve, and it's only thirteen chapters in the book. Would you how would you feel about that book when you're reading it? Okay, so then the reason I ask because most people probably wouldn't even try to finish the book once they realized that, the, you know what I'm saying, the chapters was missing. But they also wouldn't even really get into a story. They probably wouldn't believe it or it would be hard for them to even really value the quality of the book because it's missing information out of it. So this is how I feel about the Bible because books of the Bible are missing out of the Bible. So I already, when I was young growing up and being raised in the church, none of the, the stuff that I was receiving, the information I was receiving wasn't making sense to me because it was too many holes in the story. All right. I like complete stories. I prefer them actually because I'm more into factual information. I don't, I'm not really into fiction, you know what I'm saying, the fables because if I just want a story time, then, you know, that's what I would, that's what I would tune into. That's what I would look into. That's what I research. But I'm not into story time. I'm not a child anymore. You know what I'm saying? When I was then, I kind of like just accepted what was whatever was told to me. As I got older, the questions I had when I was younger started just coming back more and more powerful and strong. And so, you know, because you, you know, you're raised up to be a Christian or believe in something, you don't want to go against what you've been told. But now I understand.